Hey guys, welcome back to Fairy Tale Fridays and Makeup with me, Mandy. Hope you guys had a fantastic week. Make good choices. I think I did most of the week. Hopefully. But today's fairy tale will be The Wild Swans. And it's still out of my son's three minute like takeaway treasury, whatever. Uh, fairy tale book. And so the original one was written by Hans Christian Andersen in like 18 something another. But um, uh, there are several differences. Um, I talk about a couple of them, but not a lot. But it's a longer story, so unfortunately, like, they have to condense it down to three minutes. So, but I do, like, you know, give, give you the basis of it. Um, but if you want me to tell the full story, um, leave it in the comments below. And keep watching to see this look. If you like what you see, give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And keep watching. So, I feel like this story should actually be called, like, Daughter of the Year or Sister of the Year. That's who this chick is that this story is about. And I feel like we should all like learn something from her. You know, just throwing that one out there. Because she definitely goes above and beyond for her family. And yeah, we should definitely call it Daughter of the Year, not the Wild Swans. So basically, the original fairy tale talks about the king and says that he had 12 kids and I'm going to try to go off basically what the three minute take along book it says so in the three minute take along book I like it much better because there's only four children <laughs> nothing wrong with having 12 kids if that's for you but it's definitely not for me um, but so he has four kids three sons and his wonderful amazing daughter Elise. So basically the king like runs frantically up to wherever Elise is one day and goes, hey your brothers have had like your brothers have had a spell cast on them and I think the person's coming after you next. So he said go to the most trusted servant you have and have them take you far away. And so a lot of responsibility because apparently Elise I think was pretty young at the time, you know. It doesn't actually tell her age, but, you know, it says she was young. Um, so, yeah, that was, like, her responsibility was, like, go talk to someone, tell them to take you far away. So, and she did. So, Elise knew in her heart of hearts her whole life that her brothers were alive. She never doubted it. She always knew they were. And so, when she got older and became of age, I don't know, again, don't know how old she was. She basically made the decision. She's like, I'm going to go out and search for my brothers. And don't know where the servants were who were supposed to be taking care of her. You know, probably telling her, this isn't a good idea. But they weren't around. But, um, so she decided she was going to go find out where her, brothers, where her brothers were. So, she did. So, as Elise is on her grand adventure... She runs into, like, an old lady, like, out wherever she is in the forest, or um, they're, I'm assuming they're in a forest, they're always in a forest in a fairy tale, so I'm assuming they're in a forest. She runs into a lady, an old lady, is sp sp specifically, says, old lady, <laughs> and she's like, hey, huh. No, you don't know me, but just in case, I thought I'd ask, have you seen three princes, like prince, like not princesses, but you know, like, like a prince, three princes just running around the place? And the old lady's like, no, but you know what I have seen? I've seen three swans flying around with crowns on their head. Because that's normal. So, Elise is immediately not freaked out by this. She goes, show me where they are. So, just as the old lady said... Uh, Elise looks up in the sky, it's around sunset, and there are three swans flying through the sky, no big deal, with crowns on their head. Completely normal, nothing strange here, nothing happening. And they come down and they swoop and land right in front of her. So apparently Elise is unfazed by 
with the three swans with crowns on their heads. I feel like I would be a little freaked out, but I apparently am a bit on trauma. I don't know. And so the swans land in front of her. And they're chilling out. Like I said, it's a sunset now. And the sun sets. And they all turn into her brothers. Magically. So her brothers then proceed to tell her, yep, we're under like some weird curse where we turn into swans during the day and at night we turn back into humans. I feel like I'm like, well, why haven't you told, you know, found your sister at nighttime? I don't know. Call me crazy. I'm sure there's like another like part of this story that I am missing out on that they left out of the three minute fairy tale book. But yeah, I'm like, why wouldn't you like come find your sister at nighttime and be like, hey, poor alive. We just turn into swans during the day. So that's why you can't find me during the day. Don't know. But anyways, so yeah, so apparently all these years they've been under the thing, they've been turning into swans during the day, and at nighttime they're human, so. So it is a joyous occasion, because clearly, you know, she hasn't seen her brothers in forever. But, you know, apparently they're under this curse, and there's, they don't have, know how to break it. And so, you know, it's happy, but it's sad, because then, you know, she kind of leaves at the place like, well, what do I do now? So... Apparently she goes to sleep in some cave, or some caved area, I don't know. She goes to sleep, and as she's sleeping, a fairy comes to her in a dream, and basically tells her she's the only one that can save her brothers from this horrible curse that has been put upon them. But what she has to do is, and this is where the sister of the year comes in, she has to basically sew shirts out of rose petals, but during this time, she is not allowed to speak. She is not. She has to like fast. She can't eat. She can't drink. She can't say anything. Nothing. And she has to sew with rose petals. I'm not super crafty. I do a little bit of sewing, just you know, here and there, like hemming things like that. Rose petals. And I'm sure it was by hand because this was like back in the day. So you know, this wasn't even the fun times. They don't have sewing machines. So yeah. Then she wakes up out of this dream from like where this fairy person is talking to her and there's like a million roses around her and she's like oh crap i mean she didn't say that because clearly she can't speak so that's what she finds out she's the only one that can break the curse and she has to be quiet she can't eat she can't drink she can't do nothing else what does she do she does it because she is the best, best sister ever so elise starts her project silently starvingly and her brothers are like mad confused too they're like coming in every day like why are you being so quiet and, you know and the the story says the story even says like her brothers knew like she must have been doing something very important i'm like my sister would look at me like why are you being so quiet and why are you sewing some rose petals together that's what i feel like my sister would say but who am i to you know know what they would say back in the day I cannot talk and do this at the same time, so be right back. So the whole time while Elise is making these rose petal shirts or whatever, um, the, her brothers are actually out searching for their father, who apparently is also under a curse or missing or something. So they've been doing that the whole time while Elise is over here, you know, slaving away trying to save their lives. So she finally gets to the very last rose petal shirt. So I'm going to call it a rose petal shirt because that's basically what it is. Gets to the last rose petal shirt and, you know, her brother's curse, cur the brother's, that Words are hard. Her brother's curses have been broken. So, and, you know, she's happy and all this other stuff and then she's like, you know, I just still wish dad was here, you know, miss dad. And then apparently the fairy told her, the fairy appears out of nowhere and tells her, well, because of your sacrifice you made for your brothers, you know, it, the love and the sacrifice was so great that we are now going to free your father. So out of nowhere, dad appears. So just as like a little side note before we, that made a pop, sorry. <laughs> Before we, to the little, uh, before we get to the happily ever after, um, so apparently 
in the original like fairy tale, it says that the, it was an evil stepmother who put a curse on the millions of brothers and attempted to put one on Elise, but her heart was so pure that the curse didn't take or something like that. Um, or she could not be corrupted from her evilness. So, um, but I think that's like kind of a good thing. I mean, I feel bad for stepmoms because I feel like they get a bad rap in fairy tales. But I feel like that was kind of like um, something I wish they would have put in the book. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, because like they never actually say like in the book where the curse comes from. But it is a kid's book and it's like a three minute take along. I get it. So you have to, you know, keep it under three minutes. So. so, like I said, they all lived happily ever after due to daughter and sister of the year. She literally like, you know, didn't speak, didn't eat. I don't know about you guys, I get hangry when I like can't eat and I it is takes a lot for me to be silent on top of that. So yeah, kudos to you Elise, you the real MVP because I don't think I could do it. But and I guess I should also end with the moral of the story, which I'm not really like. My moral wants to come from the final thing that like the fairy had said which was you know, your sacrifice was so great that, you know, um, your good heart or your sacrifice was so good that it is going to free your father. So I guess you can just take from it to have a giving heart. Elise did not do the making of all the shirts or blankets or whatever, you know, with the expectation that her dad was going to be freed. Um, that was something that, you know, the, the fairy or whoever looked at and saw that the sacrifice that she made was so great that he decided to reward her with that. And I'm not saying go out there and do stuff or give for a reward. That's not a reason to sacrifice your time or sacrifice or like give for any reason whatsoever. You don't like go out and do something or like give to charity or do something nice for someone with an expectation that you should receive anything. It should be with a giving heart and just with the expectation that you're doing it because it's the right thing to do. Um, I'm not saying I do it all the time, you know, I think there's sometimes we all like a pat on the back. I'm guilty of it, you know, when I do a good job, sometimes I like to know it. And, um, but yeah, I think that's my moral of the story, is just to have a giving heart, you know. I'm not saying, like, start yourself for a month and, you know, everything like that, but just have a giving heart, you know, and if you put your family first and just be a good human being guys you know so i hope everyone has a fantastic weekend i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button hit the subscribe and i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend bye